This idea came from kind of walking through lockdown. The, the time that we could go out got to more, I, I felt like I wanted to be more out of the house. So I started going for some quite long walks. And they built up to 40 to 50 to 60 kilometers. Morning. Good morning, Mr. Kinnings. Mr. Bjorn, how are you? Um, yeah, so far so good. <laughs> the conversation started happening about golf coming back. We started looking at what could, was there something we could do? I mean, what possessed you to think about walking this colossal distance in, in, in so few days? When you do something like this, people's reaction is mostly you're mad. You know, 10 years since uh, Monty was victorious in Wales, golf for good, there's so many things coming together. So we thought it would be a, be a good idea to try and, and bring that Ryder Cup trophy back to, to Wales. You know, a lot of people come up to me and say, that's just crazy. And then two days after they come up to me and say, mm, that's pretty cool. You're raising funds for two great causes, aren't you? What is it, you, you, UNICEF and, and Golf Foundation? You know, when you go from Wentworth to Wales, you get in your car, you get on the train, and it happens quite quickly. Good luck with it. I hope everything goes brilliantly. Thank you very much. I would imagine a few of the, few of the lads have driven down from London to the Golf Tour in Wales and thought, my, that's a long walk. <laughs> I can, yeah. I was quite determined that I wanted this to happen. It's been tough for, for anyone in the world and then also for our players on tour. So many people were suffering. I felt like the world around us was just collapsing. Obviously you want to have fans out there, but at the moment we can't, so we, we've got to go with what's the second best choice. I wanted to do this for me, for the European tour, for the charities. Thank you, thank you. Let's do this. When I'm walking, my brain is always active, so it just kind of made it uh, a, a good time to think and to, to go through all the things that has happened in your life and all the things that you want to happen in your life. So that's a briefing from Rob. Any contact with a confirmed COVID-19 case in the past 14 days? No? We're very very focused on our testing, we're very focused on doing it the right way, we, we live in a bubble. So the main thing is obviously on the walk is just to make sure you follow the social distancing rules so where possible we always keep two meters apart from each other, you're in your buddy systems in the car with the driver in the front, passenger in the back. All it is says to wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I wanted to help putting that awareness on that this is what we're doing, uh, we're getting back to playing golf and um, and hopefully all, all sports will, uh, will come back as well. 210 kilometers ahead, um, looking forward to it. It's gonna be a, a big ask, but um, I'll let you know along the way how I'm getting on. You wanna take over? <laughs> when you do a long walk, the first five, six hours, it's very enjoyable, but then it starts becoming a, a, a physical challenge more than anything. You want to get away from roads, like car, car noise is the worst thing that you can have when you're walking. It, it just, in the end, it just kind of gets to you. I listen to books, uh, audiobooks and, and podcasts. I always find like a, if you have a good podcast, like 45 minutes passes quite quickly. Once you get into it or listen to a good book, then, then you get into something where you just kind of face out and you go. It's quite calm and, and easy to do. I've gone uh, 26 miles so far. To 210 kilometers, 67 in the first two days, and then, then we cut it down a little bit to look after the old legs. <laughs> Music is okay for a couple of hours, but it, like if you listen to music for 10, 11 hours, then it, then it becomes noise. Well, most of it's been road walking, and then now I'm, I'm just by canals and stuff, so we're trying to, yeah, I'm trying to make it a bit away from main roads. I mean, it's not, it's not down the M4. <laughs> that would be... <laughs> yeah, I, got, I had a few people walking with me uh, just to, to help out, so it doesn't get too boring. <laughs> One day I listened to the radio the whole day and I just came back and I couldn't, I couldn't listen to anything. It was like my, my head was just spinning from noise. 
you gotta be careful that you you don't feed the, the mind too much. Feet is struggling. Like from 35k, then the feet start struggling really. Like and. You almost want to be on roads, you know, these paths that are uneven are, are tough, so. But we go again tomorrow from this point. You know when they say ice bath, I actually look forward to one which I would never thought I would say in my life. <laughs> People talk about walking and, and I thought, well, I mean, it's walking. Like people are running marathons. So they're, you know, they're the people on their feet for a long time uh, are doing things very actively. I think it's, uh, it's the amount of time it takes to walk 50 or 60 kilometers. You're on your feet always moving for 12, between 11 and 13 hours really. So it, it's, it does, uh, your, your body does take a beating. Why does everybody look so happy? <laughs> this is right. Brad disaster already. Coffee on his t-shirt. The rain will wash that out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Last night was like, it was between sweating and freezing and for about five hours it was like, and then it was like, there you go. That's I guess the sign of not drinking or eating enough. Start of day two. A um, few blisters trying to get out of my shoes, but other than that, we'll, uh, we'll get on with it. I'm well aware that it's going to be tough. I'm well aware that it's... Uh, we're pushing limits uh, for me. Simon Ellis. <laughs> you know, as somebody said around me that in the build up to this and, and, and talking about it was, well, if it's not a test and if it's not pushing yourself, well, then it's not really worth doing. You've got to put yourself out there. You've got to have that uh, emotion in it. That bridge seems a long way away down into Wales, so... <laughs> Young Oren, how are you? There he is. <laughs> oh, you should come and walk this with me, mate. God, oh my, yeah, I just seen the pictures that you posted of your feet. That oh. was crazy. Yeah, that's not great. And that's not great when you're only halfway either. Just gone over the halfway mark. Yeah, just over the halfway mark. Oh my God. Imagine how, what those blisters are going to look like tomorrow. <laughs> It's pretty mental, this. I mean, it was a good idea when you're sitting talking about it. Actually doing it is a bit different, but there you go. Now you're in it, you got to finish it. Yeah. All right, pal, well, when I'm back in London, we'll go and have a pint. Well, you're going to need that for this. <laughs> See you, buddy. See ya. Right. Now I'm supposed to know where I am, but I don't. <laughs> I'm going west, a long way west. <laughs> Today, I feel like, in my head, I feel like, keep going, but my legs just kind of went, no more, no more. I spoke to Polter earlier, I spoke to Niall Horan, and, you know, it's, it's nice to do those things, but it gets you through 10, 15, 20 minutes, and it's just like, that makes life a little bit easier, but it's testing now. There's nothing left in the tank of, of my legs, so. Back to the hotel, nice sleep, good food, another 40 tomorrow.
the best experience uh, I've had as a as a golfer was to to do that Ryder Cup captaincy. When you take a young young group of guys that are full of wanting to do, you know, you've got to put yourself out in front of them and and show that you've got to. You want to take the responsibility, and you'd want to take the responsibility away, away from them. No. Day three. You'd be raring to go. It is a terrible, daunting experience when you're in it. Uh, I always felt like that when I was playing it. I, I felt like, I. It was almost like. It was, it was so nerve-wracking, you were like, well, I don't want to be here. But then when you woke up Monday morning after a Ryder Cup, you couldn't wait another two years till it was happening again. Uh, the, just getting the shoes on now is, is tough. I didn't want to go on this morning. As a player, I learned something new at every Ryder Cup. Like, I learned something about myself and learned something about how to be with other people. See you later. We had an amazing uh, week in Paris, and and if you don't learn to love the Ryder Cup after a week like that, I think you're going to struggle to play this game at the highest level. Left or right? <laughs> Struggling. Like, yeah. We had a, a teary moment early on today, to be honest. And uh, just when I got up the first two, three hours, I really didn't think I could do it. I really didn't. I, I was just the pain on there. Every step is, is awful right now. Take the phone out once in a while and just have a look at a few messages and gives you a little bit of a smile and keeps you going. Look at these things. The sizes of elephant trunks, those ankles now. Yeah, they need some compression socks now. Yeah. Uh. I mean, the target was to get to 30th lift for tomorrow, but that's another 16. I'm not sure I'm capable. I honestly don't think I am. Once you, you start realising that you can build up injuries... That's nice, that one, isn't it? You start worrying about is this is it is it worth it? Like is it it's something that I that I want to do. So every time I put my foot I can't flex in my feet. And put myself out there in that, that situation where where the pain becomes becomes so much. I'm done. Yeah. Absolutely done, but I'm worried about tomorrow. struggling now to, to keep it together. <sighs> I can't breathe. Like, somebody ever asked me again, what's the hardest thing you've ever done? I'm in it. I'm right in the middle of it. Oh my God. Then you think about Hopefully people get behind it and you, you raise some money, but you raise some awareness about what we're doing as a European tour. Ah. <laughs> you can bring that buggy over here, I need it. <laughs> Said to the top players, get it on your social media channels and and help, help that way. You're doing it for a good oh, absolutely, no, no. It's uh, just keep pushing through. I'm young, yeah. I'm young, thin and fit, so it's all good. Exactly. <laughs> it really isn't about uh, how much money can you get. Obviously, you want to raise as much money as possible, but at these times, people need to give what they can give. But Everything else that's going on in the world, it's nice to have these little rays of sunshine. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, ah, uh, good. All right, well, I'll let you get on with it. Thanks for calling, mate. No, no worries. Good to speak to you, Thomas. Keep going. All right. Get good, nice rest. Take care, mate. Cheers. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye.
the final push. Come on, Bridge. Here we come. I'm quite sure it'll be an extremely tough test and there'll be some, some tough moments along the way. How's that feel? <laughs> oh, amazing. Amazing. It's a bit teasing though, it's just there. <laughs> oh, well, we'll kick on. It's tough times for everyone and people go, oh, well, they're golfers, they make millions. And they don't. The general guy on tour doesn't make millions and they don't have a lot. And they've gone through five, six months of where they had had no income and their contracts are being re-looked at by sponsors and stuff just because it, that's what comes with it. So they're all suffering as well. Ah, oh, Woody. Hi, oh, yeah, pal. We bought you some supplies. <laughs> All right, buddy. Let's get you over the line. Thanks, buddy. Well done. Thanks, Amazing. Buddy. How are you? Good, thanks, yeah. Good. How are you? Uh, hi, uh, How are you? More to, uh, to the point. Not great. <laughs> <laughs> not great at all. Jeez, well, it's amazing. Well done. When you set off the first day, that's the one that you think of. That's the one that you want to get to. Wales. <laughs> There's a couple of times along the way where I'm not sure I was gonna, I was gonna get here. You know, we are getting golf back playing, and through that, it impacts so many other people's lives. Not just because they watch golf but because people get back to working and that's, uh, that's more important than anything I think at this moment in time for the whole world is that get kids back in school and get people back working, that's what we want. I mean, we want to do it safely, but we want them back, uh, back in their natural environment. I must have listened to Eye of the Tiger about 400 times now. <laughs> I think Coming up the end uh, to, to the golf course, I think it would be quite emotional in the way of... I'd done something that I... that I never thought I would do. This is something that I'll, I'll cherish a lot uh, as my life goes forward, that I've done that. It reminds me of the Ryder Cup in 2010 with this weather. Hi, mate. How are you? Yeah, I know the drill. For me, it's it's pushing my limits to the full. So when you're done, when you push your limits to the full, there might be a tear when I'm, when I get back to that hotel room uh, in Celtic Manor. The wait, you know, as, as they go into the first week of playing, I'm walking down. I can't wait to get there to to just kind of. Hopefully the support for, for that would be great. I mean, they're locked in a hotel, so they've got nothing else to do. <laughs> well done, well done, Mr. Peter. I couldn't believe that a fat bloke could do that. <laughs> Well done. Well done.